Hey everybody, good afternoon. Uh, it's uh, when Thursday, Thursday, March 4th, 2021. It's Ben Capozzi with Broad Shoulders Farm in Southern Virginia, Zone 7. Just gonna do a quick video talking about a, a very simple project that I'm working on here. Uh, so let me flip the camera around and I'll show you what's what. So I'm hanging out out here around the Rooster Lane. Thank you, Lincoln. The lads are in here singing songs and asking me to give them additional food. So I'm gonna bring them some grub uh, in a moment. But um, one of the things that I'm interested in is you know, making the most out of all the space that I've got available. It's a, uh, it's a small farm. You know, the space up here is, you know, three and a half, five acres or so. Um, and then the actual garden space is only like, you know, half an acre maybe. Um, and so, you know, making the most of what I've got is important, but it's also gotta be something that I can manage as well so that I don't um, have too many, too many things going on. But one thing that has been part of the plan is to make all of uh, the fence line productive. Like you can see there, I've got a, uh, that's a Crips Pink apple tree trained against there. Uh, it's very hard to see, but right here is a, uh, I'm pretty sure it's an Ultron Broussard pear that I'm working on uh, espaliering. Uh, and you can see all the beds uh, in there that are getting ready for crops to go in here. i got transplants coming at the end of the month. But <clears throat> making the uh, perimeters productive is, is part of how I get the most out of the space that I've got. So over here in the uh, winter quarters run that is being worked on. Hey, little guys. Um, chickens are in here working away on getting this ready. But... Uh, January, maybe even in December last year, I came and I dropped a whole bunch of really thick, you know, like six, eight inch chunks of uh, old hay there to start killing grass uh, that's there. And it's gonna do a pretty good job. You know, it's not the, uh, the most comprehensive, you know, I could have put down wood chips or first put down cardboard or something, but I didn't have those things available. Um, but I did have plenty of uh, spoiled hay. <laughs> Look at them all taking a bath. They form these cuddle puddles and then they just get in there and do their dust bathing. Big part of their hygiene. Good job, everybody. But um, <clears throat> anyhow, this is an easy way to kind of suppress this. And the earlier in the season you do it, the better. Like I said, I, I think I did this over here at least in January, maybe last year. I wish I'd done it sooner because the sooner you do it, the longer it has to break down, the longer it has to kill the material under here, the longer it has to bring up earthworms. And uh, But it's amazing how moist it is under there compared to out here. I mean, it's dry as I'll get out. But all I really need it to do at this point is make this good enough that I can come back in here in another month or so and start dropping in some perennial herbs or uh, flowers or vegetables. Um, if I really, really need to get in here and be more active. I could run the tiller down here as well. I could pull all this hay and straw out and run the tiller down here and then put the hay and straw back, plant into it. But I've got, you know, perennial vegetables and herbs, things like lovage and thyme, chamomile, feverfew, um, borage, which is an annual, but that regularly um, recedes itself. Uh, I can bring in, <coughs> excuse me, uh, daylilies, uh, milkweed, just a ton of stuff to make this outer perimeter as productive as anything that's going to be going on on the inside and of course as i've mentioned in other videos uh the winter quarters area is going to be uh the melons patch when the birds come out of there so melons and squash are going over there so this is what i'm doing right now i'm working on the same thing for the rooster run <clears throat> you know their run is I don't know, each of these segments is about 10 feet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's about a hundred feet by I'd say 50 or 60. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so 100 by 50, so it's like 5,000 square feet, give or take. Um, but that is, you know, that's plenty of running space. That's a hundred feet, fifty feet, hundred feet, fifty feet. That's three hundred feet or more of running space that I can put in flowers, vegetables. I can train peas up that. I can do more espaliered fruit trees. Uh, I can do grapevines. Um, you know, you got to think about as this mulberry tree 
leafs out, you know, it's going to cast a lot of shadow, but south is directly that way. Plenty of uh, exposure along this whole side here so that everything here can just get a gigantic stroke of sunlight. Uh, and I'm probably going to come in here and put in sunchokes uh, as well as some fruit trees. But again, it goes all the way around. I know I want to put asparagus on that side of the fence. And again, this will be on the outside of the fence. So the lads can't necessarily get to it, but it's close enough that if I want to throw them extra apples, if I want to throw them some asparagus stalks or peas or anything like that, I can, you know, if I'm growing good King Henry out here or uh, like a sorrel or, you know, just one of a host of other really good things, I can put it all out here, grow it out here for them, cut it and throw it right over to help give them food. That's in addition to the plants that I'm going to be growing in here for them. And I'm doing this all over the orchard, all over the garden. In the garden, I'm doing it on both the outside and the inside because on the inside of the garden, I don't have the same pressure of chickens running around loose or ducks running around loose and um, tucking into everything. Now, having said that, if that becomes a problem out here, I can just run a really low chicken wire fence, you know, maybe two feet tall with some stakes just to keep this back a little bit and keep it from being completely destroyed by um, the ducks or the geese. Um, so I've got options, but for me, part of the name of the game is maximizing production. Cause as you know, one of my big, big farm goals is to completely get off of purchasing any commercial feed. And so part of that is making the most of all the space that we've got. Hi baby. Um, so that's what I'm working on here. It's just a very simple technique. If you've ever done straw bale gardening, you know that this uh, straw and hay breaks down over time. I, I prefer hay, even though it's got some seeds in it. Um, I think it's, more nutritious there's more stuff in there um as opposed to just straw being you know the dead stalks of grain crops um, the hay is grasses and weeds and everything growing out in the field uh, that gets harvested up um it'll take it a while to break down but i can always continue to add more of it i get these bales uh it's organic hay from uh, tuck farms here in halifax county for about four bucks a bale i think and that's delivered which is an awesome awesome deal um, and this stuff has been out uh, weathering, so it's heavier and not really suitable for bedding uh, or certainly, well, I wouldn't really use it for feed or fodder. The um, chickens aren't going to eat the hay um, after it's been dried, but... Hi, Wheezies. Hi. Hello, Anika. You got a lot to say. Who's your friend? Is that Dorothy? I can't tell if that's you or not. I don't think that is Dorothy. That might be Blanche. <laughs> Anyhow, um, if you want to look up more about how to work with hay to suppress weeds and build beds, um, check out uh, Ruth Stout, um, an American author, a uh, lovely little old lady, I think, actively writing from the 50s into the 60s and 70s, 1970s or so. Um, has a deep, deep mulch gardening technique. Um, this is essentially what I'm doing here. Um, and you know... I, is this the best way to do this? Is this the best, you know, should I come in and prepare lasagna beds and add the layer of compost and, you know, uh, make sure that, you know, there's no weeds in this and um, come in with straws and inoculate it with, um, you know, uh, mycorrhiza uh, and rhizopium and all this stuff. I mean, if you want to baby something, absolutely go to town. I mean, there's a ton of stuff you can do for that, but I'm looking at killing parts of the pasture here along the perimeter as efficiently and inexpensively and sometimes those two things don't work together but as possible so that I can get plants going into it ASAP. Uh, I've got about 1500 vegetable starts um, and some herbs as well at Tuck Farms in their greenhouse right now uh, that I'm going to start picking up actually next week. Um, they're mostly things to go into the vegetable garden beds, but uh, there are some herbs and such that are going to be coming out here and more and more coming as we go over the season. So I just need to get this ground prepped. I need to get it uh, a little bit of a start, you know, to get it going so that it's uh, primed for when I come in here. Would it be better if I'd done this last year so that it had all winter to do this? Absolutely. Does that mean don't do it? No. Today is when I can do it. I've got time today. I'm going to work on it little by little. I know I'm not going to get the whole perimeter today, but I'm getting started on it. So whatever you may be uh, 
envisioning that you haven't started yet, if you've got time, you know, get onto it. My uh, dad said that his mom always used to say, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So we're just taking a little bite at a time here. This is what I can do today amidst all the other projects going on. And soon I'll be talking about a big project from here to there, which I'm really excited about, but that's for another video. So wherever you are, I hope that you are hale and whole and hearty and happy and doing really well and the same for all your loved ones. And um, please continue to stay that way. Uh, you can always follow me here on the YouTubes and follow the farm on Instagram and Facebook at Broad Shoulders Farm if you're into that sort of thing. All right, I'll catch you later. Take care. I'm coming, lads. Just a sec.